the gospel sets before us the great contrast between the disobedient Adam and Eve and the perfectly obedient Jesus Christ. Satiated with whatever they could possibly want as provided for them in the garden, Adam and Eve are tempted to want even more. Indeed, to want what the tempter reminds them that they have been told they cannot have. And so they even risk paradise to get it. On the other hand, look at the setting for Jesus. Not a lush garden, but a deserted mountaintop in the desert. And even though he has been fasting for 40 days, his will is strong enough to say no to all the enticements of the tempter. Why? Well, perhaps Adam and Eve indeed have had everything, and they have denied themselves nothing, so they want more. Consequently, they say no to God and yes to Satan. On the other hand, Jesus has permitted himself absolutely nothing, for 40 days. And so he knows how to live with nothing. Indeed, he has said no to himself. And so he is free to say yes to God and no to Satan. Today's readings then provide us a powerful reminder that fasting can be a valuable tool, not when it's taken for vain reasons like Gee, Easter's coming and I want to be able to fit into that dress or suit. But rather, taken on for self-discipline and spiritual strength. Certainly, every major religion in history has a tradition of fasting. And some could put us to shame for their strict adherence to it in comparison with our growing laxity toward it as Catholic Christians. Indeed, many of us remember when that obligation not to eat meat on Friday was lifted, and that's all we heard. Catholics generally didn't listen to the rest of the late Paul VI message about the need for every one of the faithful to practice some form of penance, and especially on Fridays, remembering that every Friday is to recall the death of Jesus for us on the cross. Penance through some kind of sacrifice and self-denial. No, we didn't have to not eat meat, but we were supposed to find something else. Lent, then, is perhaps the only time that we as Catholics really think seriously about fasting. And then, perhaps, it's only on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday when fasting is legislated for us. But if we received ashes last Wednesday, through that very public sign, we were saying to the world, that we would be under penance for a whole season, not merely for a couple of days, but indeed for 40. And check the bulletin, those 40 start counting today. And so, during those, we would fast, pray, and give alms to the poor. But of the three disciplines of Lent, fasting is probably the most essential, and yet the last and least embraced. Why? Because we live in the first world. In a sense, we live in the new Eden in terms of having most all of our needs met, and maybe much more indeed. We live in the lap of luxury, whether we appreciate it or not. With the availability of all manner of goods and services at our disposal, the message of our consumerist culture 
is that it's almost our birthright to have it all. So people deny themselves very little or nothing, and many even go into debt to do it. We have been trained not to take no for an answer from anyone, and least of all, ourselves. So like Adam and Eve then, we end up weak in the face of temptations, and indeed, even for that one thing that we simply don't yet have. And so, we would be willing to commit sin, maybe, to get it beginning with the self-indulgence that is, in the end, gluttony. But some will even resort to indebtedness or crime. How important, then, is it that we rediscover the discipline of self-denial, that we start to learn to say no to ourselves, and we might start with that which presents itself most readily and frequently in our lives, food and drink. When we start to succeed at disciplining ourselves through fasting, it is then that we are better able to say yes to God and no to temptation. When we stop constantly filling ourselves with food and drink, then we progress further to stop filling our lives with things. It is then that we start to have more room for God, more space for prayer. When we make room for God, then we will most naturally start thinking of others before ourselves. And so our acts of charity, made affordable by our self-denial, can become more abundant. So fasting is the foundation on which the disciplines of prayer and charity are built. So let this Lent be the one where we rediscover fasting and its many fruits for ourselves and for others. If we would but make that start today, day one of the Lenten season, and keep it throughout all 40, we will surely spiritually go into the desert with Jesus and we will emerge from the tomb with him at Easter more fully alive. For having died to our own desires through fasting that is fruitful for the poor, we will certainly be rising anew with, with him who laid down his life to save us all. So fast, pray, give alms. These are the disciplines of Lent. But let us start with fasting if we truly want to accomplish the other two.